Good morning, good morning, good morning, Strength TV family. It's a pleasure, and I, I pray that the words that are, that's going to come forth will bless your life, will make a life change for you on today, in Jesus' name. We pray that you'll be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, our theme is taken from Strength, Just a Daily Morsel of Bread, written by our very own prophetess, Dr. M.P. Washington. Amen. And our theme for today, for November 12th, is the self-made prison. Oh, my God. The self-made prison. Our scripture is coming from Psalms 142 and 7. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to read just the uh, part A of that verse. And it reads, Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. You escorted your own soul into a prison. When you allowed your heart to reach out for love that was not yet sanctified. When you sought to obtain the treasures of life outside of Christ, you imprisoned your own soul. Satan has lured and he uses it each time he sees a soul in desperation. Being desperate for friendship, Love, money, anything is, is a definite means to become imprisoned. When your soul experiences suffering from what you thought to be love or what should be love, the effects can and often does permeate every part of your being. When a love one violates the law of love, the mind becomes preoccupied with trying to understand it. The heart begins to lose its will to engage in everyday duties. If you are not mindful to speak God's word to your own heart, you will find that, hallelujah, you will find that that you have is joy. All right. When your heart suffers, mm -hmm. Satan will lure you into a depression. Mm. And you will neglect all the rich blessings of God in your life. This can only happen when you put people in the place that only God should hold. Mm -hmm. It is never apparent to the same person that people are out of their place in your life. At least not until they hurt you. Do not overestimate your own strength. Accept yes. the fact that you are weak and all things must be tried by God before you receive them. Satan is trusting and hoping that you are not watchful so that he can use you. Don't let him don't let him use you. Yes. Don't let him slow you down. Can't you see the prison up ahead? Can't you see it? Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Yes. The self-made prison. We bless God for our apostle, prophetess, Dr. M.P. Washington. Yes for the hand or the pen of the ready writer. Amen. This theme for today, no one wants to look at themselves and say, I've created my own prison. I've created my own place of stagnation. I've created my own place of captivity and bondage. But don't you know and realize that we do this and when we look at the scripture in Psalms 142 and 7, it says, bring my soul out of 
prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. And when we look at the scripture, this is King David. And at this time, he is not king. But he has already received the anointing, the calling of being king of Israel. But he had to run for his life. But before we go into that, we just want to look at the word prison. Prison is a place of confinement. Some say it's a building. In David's um, writing, it was a cave. A prison is also a place of restrictions. It's a place that has limitations. So what prophet is, what do you think about someone building their own prison? Um, I believe that when we build our own prison, um, it pretty much keeps us uh, in a place of um, as you said before, stagnation, uh, the limitations, uh, we become depressed, oppressed. Um, we also become afraid, so there's fear. Uh, there's a lot of things as far as the, the soul realm uh, where we make ourselves um, in a place where we cannot come out. Uh, or we feel like we can't come out. Uh, and so that prison in itself, it just keeps us restricted, as you said before, it just keeps us in a position where we feel boxed in, where we feel alone, we are, we are lonely, we are depressed, um, and we feel helpless and hopeless. Yes. You know, we feel like we, uh, we feel like um, that we're by ourselves, you know, and that um, we want someone to help us out of this situation, but we don't know how, you know, yes, as yes. I said, and I think you said, like you said, you feel uh, restricted, mm -hmm. you know, you feel like you just can't get out, you can't break free, you know, you're boxed in, and so um, I believe that's what that, that prison is, that, and it's self-made, when she put self-made, uh, to me, I think about um, how we imprison our own self to a point to where uh, we feel condemned, you know, oh and um, we feel guilty about some of the things that we've done, mm -hmm. and we can't break out, break away from that, and I believe that's what the enemy tries to keep us in that position uh, to where we are uh, in a dark area. Oh my God. Amen. Amen. And the enemy will use that dark area, that dark place that he has put you in, and he'll surround you in darkness so you don't know how to come out. Yeah. You don't know how to come out. And uh, Mr. Veronica, what do you think about the enemy pushing you in a prison? Why would he do that? Well, I know in... Uh in the book, uh, what co-pastor wrote, it, uh, it was saying that when we put ourselves in depression, mm -hmm. when we put ourselves so far away from God, mm -hmm. that's when the enemy sees a good place to come mm -hmm. and take us. Yes, yes. You know, he comes when you're at your weakest moment. He comes when you... Uh, when you just say, I, I just can't take it anymore, or I can't, I can't do uh -huh. this anymore. Uh -huh. You've given him the room to come and take what he want to take, which is your life. Mm. You My know, God. because the word of God tells us he come to steal, kill, and to destroy. Yes. So when he see an open way, he's going to come in full force. Mm. And he's going to take it. what he want to take, Yes. which hey. is your life. Amen, amen. And when we look at the reading, I, I notated on here, she says, you escorted your own soul into a prison when you allowed your heart to reach out for love that was not yet sanctified. 
When you sought to obtain the treasures of life outside of Christ, you imprisoned your own soul. And then she wrote that Satan has lure, lures and he uses it each time he sees a soul in de desperation. So when we look that our love is out of place, our treasures are out of place, and we are in desperation. What does that do to one's mind, Prophet Shakira? Love is out of place, your treasures are out of place, and you're in desperate. I believe it confuses the mind uh, to where you unstable. You know, you don't know, you're tossed to and fro, you don't know which way to go. Uh, you're just um, pretty much in a position um, where you just don't know where to go. You don't know who to turn to. Uh, you're lost. You know, you're lost. It's almost like uh, when you're on the road and you don't have no kind of sense of direction. You know, you don't have no one to, uh, you don't have the GPS. You don't have anyone to uh, guide you and tell you where to go. The same thing, he, he puts you in a position to where you feel like, um, you, you just don't know what to do. Yes. You know, you're just in a, 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 a position of stuck. You're yeah. just stuck. <laughs> you're stuck there, and then you don't have the, if, if you, it, it was talking about the heart, so in the love, so I would say with that, sometimes we tend to uh, share too much with people or we put too much on them, yeah. you know, so, yeah. and what I mean by on them is instead of taking it to the Lord, you know, we have our expectations in them, and so we, out of desperation, we tend to share some things sometimes with people or, um, and it's out of place, you know, that's how you're out of position, so when you're sharing some things with people, instead of you speaking to God and saying, should I share this with someone, or should I confide in them, or whatever it may be, you tend to um, do that, and it's not expedient for you to do why, it. You know, why? so then, you know, because of that, then your heart begins to feel, oh man, I shouldn't have did that. You know, yeah. I messed up. Um, and um, so I, I believe that we just got to begin to ask the Spirit of the Lord to guide us, uh, to um, speak to us, Amen. and also, too, to teach us um, on how to be slow to speak and quick to listen. You know, sometimes we just have to, we just can't just share a whole lot of things with other people. So true. Amen. And we bless God for what you said, because sometimes we just don't know what to do, what to say, because we are we're searching for love. We're searching for acceptance. We're searching for the treasures of this world. We're searching for these things and we want these things. So the enemy, you know, the spirit of uh, attraction, you know, we, be, we tend to call those things to us. I don't know if you ever had a lust spirit. Come on. Amen. 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 And you can walk in a room and you can be attracted to someone else with that same lust spirit. Yes. The spirit of attraction began to operate. It's like, a it's like a magnet calling you to it. You can go to a new city you've never been before and you will find out right quick what the drug's at. What a, because the spirit of attraction, the principalities that's over there is guiding us. That magnet that you just talked about is leading us to this. So we have to know that the enemy do not like us. The enemy wants us to fail. The enemy wants us to be all consumed with me, what I feel, what I think, what I want. Come on here. So when the enemy, we show the enemy our desires. We show the enemy what we are attracted to. 
We show the enemy that we're desperate when things aren't going our way and we need to do something. We begin to expose our heart, expose ourselves, emotions and feelings to the enemy. What, Mr. Veronica, what do you think about when you expose yourself to the enemy? What will he do? <laughs> expose. Expose mean that you just showed the enemy everything that you had in your pocket mm -hmm. or in your purse Amen. or what's in your heart. You just exposed everything. My God. It's just like uh, when you open up a present or you open up uh, even a pack of uh, a loaf of bread, you exposed it to air. Mm -hmm. You know, it was closed, it was confined, mm -hmm. it was sealed, and now it's just in the open. Oh my God. Where everything can attack, everything can come in and attach itself to it without you seeing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like in the airways. We don't see what's in the airways. Mm -hmm. We don't see the exposure, mm -hmm. but we feel the exposure. We feel that something hit us mm -hmm. or, oh man, what's that? All of a sudden, I feel bad. Mm -hmm. It's in the airway. Yes. You can't yes. see it, but you expose. When you expose yourself, you expose yourself to the elements, to the things in the air. Amen. Amen. So what we were, what I'm hearing, you're saying that that exposure that we exposed ourselves to the enemy, that he is the prince of the power of this airway. Amen. Amen. And we have given him the right. To come in. Oh, the He'll be trespassing. Mm -hmm. But we done opened up the door and say, come on. <laughs> we done opened up the door. And we have opened up the door to our heart, to our treasure, to our love. And when we get hurt and when we get violated, then we want to say, oh, Lord, have mercy. Then we want to say, well, why did this happen to me? Why uh, did they do this to me? But we don't take the time to see. You open the door. Yes, we did it to ourselves. You open the door. If you don't want to open the door, it, it comes a time when you know your seasonal demon is there to attack you. And you know it's time for you to fight. Amen. Why will I answer the phone or open the door? <laughs> curiosity. <laughs> curiosity can put you in a position where you error. Yes. You know, because you uh, want to, you know, it's just like um, Adam and Eve or Eve. You know, that curiosity of wanting to eat that fruit, Won't you know. The fruit. So, yes. uh, the same thing with us, you know, sometimes we put ourselves in a position to where we uh, begin to, like she said, expose yourself. And you're in error in, because you didn't try the spirit. You have to try the spirit by the spirit. And you have to see what type of fruits and see if it's of God and yes. if God wanted you to proceed with whatever it was or speak to that person or whatever it might be because as I said before it might not be expedient for you uh, to share some things with yeah. that particular person yeah. uh, it's not not everybody that you come into contact with is a person that is on your side and that's going to build you up you know some people are there just for itching ears they have yeah. itching ears on, you know so babes. yeah and, and that baby uh, you didn't tarnish because they looking up to you they are looking at your light and when you start talking about your personal business or something that's going on mm -hmm. in your life you didn't ruin another life you didn't hurt you didn't hurt mm -hmm. a loved one stagnated a loved one. that loved one yes you know, so that um, in the writing, she says, when a loved one violates the law of love, the mind becomes preoccupied trying to understand. Let's talk about the mindset. Yes, my God. When that person is hurt, when that person is confused, what is going on in that mind? I would say that it's 
Basically, you just, you're wavering. And you're just kind of thinking, you know, a whole lot of things could be going on in your, your mind where, um, especially with our mind, because our mind has different perceptions of what we should have thought that that person should have done or how they should have responded. In, yes. in, um, and because we're so out of touch um, and we don't recognize that they are human, you know, and that's the thing. So sometimes we put people in a position where we, as I said before, have expectations of them and they don't know how to receive what you have or um, they, they're, uh, you expose your heart to a position and you open up yourself to them and now you, um, you're hurt by it, you know, and you, not only that is, um, you feel like they let you down, yeah. you know, you feel like, um, why did they do this to me? Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, it, it's just a lot of emotions that come with that. Yes. And so sometimes in that, when you're in that position, you don't know um, what you need to do next. You, you don't know, hey, should I go to this person? Should I not go to this person? Yeah. Should I, uh, you know, just pray about it? Um, because your mind is confused. Yes. But the Bible says, let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus, and also says, gird up the lawns of your yes. mind. Yes. And we have to also remember, too, that uh, with the heart, um, to, we don't want to give up our treasures, you know, the things that's in our heart, you know, and sometimes uh, if we have big expectations of someone and we expose ourselves uh, to them and open up to them, then we find ourselves now we are the ones that's uh, being damaged by it or that's being um, in a position where um, we are hurt by it and we feel like, hey, they did us wrong, you know, but we don't recognize that particular heart themselves, you know, and, and that's the thing, we don't recognize their heart. Right, and, right. and that's one of the things that we need to remember is that we need to understand that, you know, um, everybody's human first, you know, and uh, we have to allow the Spirit of God to use us first. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, when you were talking about the heart, we have to realize sometimes people, uh, like you said, the expectations that we have mm -hmm. in our heart, they're not ready for that yet. Mm -hmm. You know, they haven't grown up to that point yet. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, when we expose that, that kinds of, you know, oh no, that's too much. You know, and they'll back off. Mm -hmm. You know, and at the same time, they put, they put themselves in harm way you know, in harm's way, I'm sorry. And then they out in the wide open, they hurt, they don't, un like I said, they don't understand, and uh, and they just lost. They get lost up in the, in the battle of not understanding the expectations. Oh, I didn't know, you know, some, some people is just too much for them. So you got to feed them little by little, like a little baby, you know a taste of this and a taste of that, you know, until they grown up to the, the milk and then to the meat. <laughs> Amen. 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 So we're talking about a self-made prison. And when you self-afflict yourself, you deprive your own self from liberty. You deprive your own self from being made whole in the Lord. You deprive yourself can you imagine that you're hungry, you're in your house, your home, but you will never go to the kitchen? But in the kitchen, you open up the refrigerator, you've got all this food, all this food, everything you can drink, the, fr the fruit, the everything. But you're hungry, but you're staying in the living room. Wow. And you will not go in to the kitchen to get something to eat. So that person have put themselves in a prison and refused to come out. When they know that it's in the next room, I can get what I need in the next room. So what I want you to understand is we are in the world, this world that God has made, amen? But he said that we are not of the world, but we are set apart. But if you have to come to grips with who you are. You have to come to grips with, hey, I'm not a 
prisoner. Yes. I choose to be set free. I choose to be free. So in order to be free, that means I got to give up some things. I have to make up in my mind, hey, I, I don't want to die of starvation, so I'm getting my scared stuff up, I'm getting my fearful stuff up, my emotional stuff up, and I'm going to the next room to get something out the kitchen. So the same thing in the spirit. You got to make up in your mind that you're not going to be lost. That you're not going to be held in captivity. That you're not going to be held in bondage. You got to go to a place, hallelujah, that you can glean from the Lord, Lord and you can glean from his word. But the Lord said that, just come to the altar. Well, the fire is forever burning. And that fire at the altar will burn off that fear, that low self-esteem, that whatever it may be, because God don't want his saints in prison. Amen. 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 So don't deprive yourself. Don't deprive yourself from eating the good of the Lord, laying of the Lord, and being more than what you are. Jesus came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Before we do our last um, words from our panelists, when the Lord said that he came that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly, we can't have abundant life if we're in prison. We can't have abundant life if, if we're in depression, in oppression, so, prophetess, secure, this is your last word. So I need you to look out there in Strength TV. How would you strengthen someone to come out of their prison? I would tell you in the name of Jesus, God has come to set the captive free right now in the name of Jesus. Gird up the loins of your mind in the name of Jesus. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Know that God has come to bless you, heal you, and deliver you. God is for you. Hallelujah. And he loves you because he died on the cross for you in the name of Jesus. And he did not come to keep you in captivity. He did not. Hallelujah. He sent his son to keep you get you out of the prison. Amen? So you, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, are set free in the name of Jesus. You are no longer restricted in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord because he has set you free in the name of Jesus. Rejoice because he has set you free in the name of Jesus. You're no longer bound in the name of Jesus. The Lord loves you in the name of Jesus. He has blessed you in the name of Jesus. He is a keeper in the name of Jesus. He's brought you this far and he will never leave you nor forsake you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Minister Veronica. Look into Strength TV. Amen. How would you encourage someone to come out of their prison, to be set free? Hallelujah. First of all, you have to give it up. Whatever it is in the name of Jesus that's keeping you captive. You have to come. You have to repent. You have to ask for forgiveness. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, yes, Jesus, you have to come boldly to the throne of grace. Oh, Hallelujah. You have to ask God for forgiveness. Hallelujah. You, you have Jesus. to say, Lord, it is me that has fallen short. Yes. My God. Mm. We have to come in with, with our hands lifted up and leave everything outside and just give it all to God. Whatever is burdening your heart right now in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to that heart right now. Hallelujah. The heart. The heart. We have the heart and the mind of God. Amen. But when you come to God, God is going to give you a new mind, 
a new heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is going to change everything about uh, you. Hallelujah. He's even going to change your name. Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From uh, Mary to Sister Mary. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then from Sister Mary to Prophetess Sister Mary. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is going to change everything. Hallelujah. But you first got to come. Hallelujah. You first got to ask, Lord, I, 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 I want forgiveness. I, I did some things wrong in my life. I want to change my life. Get yourself out of prison. You have the keys. Come on now. God has given us the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. But he also has given you keys to get yourself out of prison. In the name of Jesus. Use your keys, my sister. Use your keys, my brother. Yes, Jesus. The Lord is calling you. Amen. Come closer. In the name of Jesus. Be blessed on this morning. Amen, amen. Let's give our panelists a hand praise, amen. Thank you so much, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we thank you, hallelujah. Beautiful job on tonight, amen. You may have your seat, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. The self-made prison. Oh my God. The self made prison. I don't know about you today, but I put myself in prison one day. Hallelujah. And despite how much I wanted to come out of prison, I couldn't come out because of the things that I allowed to take rule in my life, held me captive, held me in bondage, held me still shackled in chains. Before I come down to speak with you, I want to read uh, a few scriptures before I come down. Once again, our scripture was taken from Psalms 142 and 7, and this was David, bring my soul out of prison that I may praise thy name. And I want to go to 1 Samuel 22 and 2. Well, verses 1 and 2. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them and they were with him about 400 men. Hallelujah. Let's take it a little further. Chapter 23 in verse 13. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. Hallelujah. One more scripture before I come down. I want to go to um, chapter 24. Hallelujah. Ha ah, yeah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now you know I had this marked in my Bible and I'm on my tablet. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I said um, the 24th chapter, verse 2, Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David 
and his men upon rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coats by the way, where, where was a cave? And Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the side of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord has said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver the enemy into thy hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart spoke to him, because he had cut off Saul's skirt. Thank you, Jesus. I want to go further down. Find my verse. Verse 11. Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and killed thee not, my God. Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand. And I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. Saul, David told Saul, yet you huntest my soul to take it. Hallelujah. Let me talk to you. Hallelujah. I bless God for you. Amen. Hallelujah. David was sought off after by King Saul. We know the story. No matter what he went, somebody told Saul, we heard David was in the wilderness. So Saul went and took his army. They began to search for him. But do you know why while David was laying out for his life, to save his life, because King Saul was trying to kill him. David began to run. David began to hide. Can you imagine how David felt? This is my king. This is the one who I, I, I've surrendered to. This is the one that I fought battles for. This is the one that I sung to, that I played the heart to. This is the one I came into alliance with that I will fight for him. But he has turned his hatred toward David. Can you imagine what David's heart felt? Can you imagine how David's mind began to get confused and overwhelmed? Can you imagine what David felt in his soul? Can you imagine what David felt in his spirit? And he began to run for his life because he did not understand why his father, why his king would seek for him. Well, we're talking about a self-made prison. Amen. King Saul was imprisoned by his own mind. King Saul was imprisoned by his jealousy and his, his not understanding who David was. All right. King Saul was wrapped up in the lust of his mind concerning his son, concerning David, who served him. But King Saul made a prison. And in his mind, he was in prison, and he wasn't the only thing he felt like, if I kill David, I'll be set free. If I kill David, I will be all right. But he had a prison because the people began to praise David. They began to say, Saul killed a thousand, but David killed 10,000. And the jealousy began to rage up and raised up in King Saul. So King Saul's mind became imprisoned where he loved David. Now he hates David. Where he needed David, 
Now he wants to kill David. What's going on in his mind? What's going on in his mind? What's going on in his heart? But we find out that he began to pursue David because he had the vengeance that he wanted to kill him. So David ran for his life. I got a point that I'm trying to make. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. Even when David began to run, David began to flee for his life, he became in a prison as well. Yeah. All right? Yeah. He was in a prison. How can this be? Why is he doing this? So he was confused. He even had to run away to the enemy and to act like he was a crazy man so they wouldn't kill him. David had to run from his father, from his king. So we're looking at two men who was in prison. But look what I want to tell you. There is a prison in the physical and there's a prison in the spirit. Hallelujah. Now, when Paul and Silas was in prison, they were in a natural prison. Yeah. They were taken siege. They were taken captive by the people. And they were held in a place, yeah. a confined place, a restricted place. Amen? Amen. When the three Hebrew boys was, was getting ready to be tossed in the fiery furnace, they were held in a confined place. Yeah. Am I telling you right? So, these were people that was confined in a physical prison. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. But when their mind set was saying, the three, B, three Hebrew boys say, even if our God don't deliver me, I know that he's able, I know that he can. So, their mind wasn't in captivity. Their bodies was in captivity. Yeah. Hallelujah. our God. Let us magnify our God. Let us pray to our God. They were in a natural prison, but their minds were not in prison. What am I saying to you today? Hallelujah. There's a place that you have to go to. If you are in a natural prison, you're confined. You do what they tell you to do. Yeah. You eat when they tell you to eat. You go to sleep when they tell you to go to sleep. What does this have to do with a self-made prison? If we understood the dynamics of a regular prison, let's turn that around to the spirit. How can my mind be held captive for the things that I've allowed to happen in my own flesh? I just have to testify. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a time, like I told you, that I was in prison. I wasn't in a natural prison, but I was in the prison of my own mind, in my own thoughts, in my own emotions, in my own feelings. I was held captive. When I looked upon myself and thought that I couldn't do no better, I couldn't be no better, that I was less and I've done too much wrong. Hallelujah. I was in a prison and I refused to come out. I want you to understand what I'm saying. What is holding you in captivity? What is holding you bound? Is it your emotions? Is it your feelings? Is it your bad understanding? What is holding you captive? Is it your stronghold that you don't want to fight against? That you don't want to surrender unto the power of the Holy Ghost? We're talking about a prison. David was running for his life. But yet, when he was running for his life, the man came who was depressed, who was oppressed. Hallelujah. Who needed money? Hallelujah. Who was forsaken? And they began to come unto David. And David became their captain. What am I saying here? David didn't have time to be confined in the confinements of his mind. He didn't have time to be um, confined in his mind concerning what King Saul was seeking after him. Now he's saying, I got these men 
me to help them. I got these men who's looking for me to help bring them out. I got to minister to these people. Even though he was running for his life. You got to know there's going to be some circumstances in your life. There's going to be some issues in your life. And you're going to have to stand up and make a choice. Am I going to live for holiness? Am I going to revert back to what I once knew and what I once was? There's a crossroad that you're, going, you're coming to. All right. There's a crossroad in your life. The days is wickeder, is evil. We don't know when the end is here, but we know that it's near. So we got to line up. We cannot be confined or restricted by the things that we have allowed in our flesh, the things that we have allowed in our minds, the things that we have allowed in our circumstances. David and his men hid in the cave. And when they hid in the cave, Saul and his men, you know that had to be a big cave. Come on, now. If David had 400 men, My Lord. hallelujah, My Lord. and Saul had 3,000 men, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, Come on, now. this was a big cave. Come on. And it said that David men hid on the side of the cave. And when Saul came in, he wanted to cover his feet. He wanted to rest for a while. He wanted to regain his strength. Amen? Amen? But what he did not know, that the person he was seeking for was right there where he was. What did he didn't realize? That it was time for deliverance. It was time for breakthrough. It was time for the roles that met together what something was going to be resolved. You got to know that your crossroad is here. You got to know that it's time for you to lay aside every weight, to lay aside every sin that so easily besets you and choose today. Don't you harden your heart. When you hear the word of God, don't you harden your heart. It's time for you to gird up the loins of your mind. It's time for you to make a decision right now. Amen? So when Saul got into the cave, he fell asleep. And don't you know David, men love David. But yet, they told David, your enemy is here. You need to kill your enemy. David said, I cannot touch God's anointed. He is still God's anointed. Therefore, David went to Saul and cut off a piece of his skirt. Yeah. Yes, he did. My God. And when I thought about that, I thought about the cutting off of an enemy's skirt. <laughs> that took me for a loop. <laughs> David, God will give you some wisdom. God, God will let you know what you need to do, how you need to do it. David didn't go boisterous. He didn't go loud. He went quiet. He went meek. And he went and cut off the enemy's skirt. What is that saying? Sometimes you can't let the devil know what you're doing. Sometimes you got to use some, some wisdom that the Lord is going to get you out of that situation. You, you got to use some wisdom in these circumstances that you're in. David went and cut off the skirt of Saul. And when Saul and his men began to go out of the cave, David stood at the top of the cave and said, King Saul, King Saul, you can see I've cut off your skirt. Look at your skirt. I've cut it off. And when he saw that and he looked down at his skirt, and David began to tell King Saul, you have done all this, all this to me, but you're seeking for my soul. He didn't tell him, you're seeking to kill my life. He said, you're seeking for my soul. We know that he wanted to kill him. Yeah. But look at David's response. You come to seek my 
my soul. You come to take my soul. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to come and take your soul. The enemy wants you to die in your sin. The enemy wants you to die in your polluted blood. The enemy wants you to die in your captivity. The enemy wants you to die. The enemy wants to take your soul. And when he takes your soul, oh my God, you're dead. You're dead. The enemy don't want your soul to rejoice and be glad therein, for God has redeemed you and set you free. He wants your soul to be taken so you would die and your, your destination would be hell. But the scripture says, if you're filthy, stay filthy still. If you're a murderer, be a murderer. If you're a liar, be a liar. Today is your day of reckoning. Today is your day to make a decision. Whose side are you on? Come on now. Come on. David was running for his life. But he never gave up his faith. He never gave up his dream and his vision. What God has anointed him to be king. He wasn't king yet. But yet he held on to the words of God. What words are you holding on to? Are you holding on to spirit and life? Or are you holding on to death? It's up to you today. But you got to know that you're not by yourself. You got to know that God has ordained you for such a time as this. Today is your day. Today is your day to make up your mind whose side you're on. If you're going to serve God, are you going to serve Baal? Are you going to serve the devil? There's prisons in life. There's strongholds in life. There's trouble in life. But I come to tell you today, we have a heavenly father that loves us so much that he sent his, his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary's cross for the remissions of your sin. Jesus took on the sins of the world for you. So he took on your depression. Thank you, Lord. He took on your oppression. He took on your murderer's spirit, your lying spirit, your stealing spirit, your alcohol, your drug. Your, you name it. Jesus put it on. He put it on. Jesus put on the captivity of the world. Jesus took on the bondage of the world. But he said in three days, you're going to see me because I'm going to rise up. And when I rise up, I'm going to rise up with all power. I'm going to rise up and then I'm going to be free from this bondage. I'm going to be free from this hell. I'm going to be free from the sins. Right. So why is that important? Huh. It's important because he did it for you. He did it for you. He did it for you. He did it for you so you can tell drugs that's enough. You can tell alcoholism, that's enough. You can tell adultery and fornication, that's enough. Jesus gave me power to come out. Yes. Was it easy for me to come out of sin's bed? No. Was it easy? No, it was not easy. But I bless God that uh, something raised up on the inside of me. Hope raised up. Hallelujah. Jesus raised up on the inside of me. Let Jesus rise up on the inside of you. Surrender today. Surrender your bad thinking. Surrender that stronghold. Surrender that doubt. Surrender that fear. All you got to say is, Father, here I am. I surrender to you and I confess that I'm a sinner. I confess all of my 
sins unto you, Lord God. I'm not worthy to call on you, God. But I know that you love me. I know that you sent Jesus for me. I believe that you died on the cross for me, Jesus. Therefore, I too can rise. Rise today. Rise today. Don't let nothing stop you. Don't let nothing hinder you. You remember that spirit that I said? I'm not good enough. That's for everybody else. That spirit stayed dormant for years. And every time I started to go through something, that spirit would come back up. And I start feeling once again that I'm not worthy. Once again, hallelujah, that I'm not good enough. Once again. But I tell you, surrender it all unto the Lord today. Don't let the enemy hold you captive. Don't let the enemy hold you bound because you have a Savior. You have a Redeemer. Call on his name, Jesus. Call on his name, Jesus. He's at that dinner table with you. He's at that couch with you. He's on your job with you. He's in that bad relationship that you toss to and fro in. But all you got to do is call him. All you got to do is say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, come stand by me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Cry out unto him. Because the Lord is not going to hear a sinner's prayer. But the Lord will hear your cry. All right. It's time to cry out to your father. It's time to shake yourself. It's time to rise up from the, the elements of this world. It's time to rise up, dust yourself out, and be delivered and be set free. Get out of your prison. Get out of your prison. We all were held captive in one way, in one shape, one form. We all was held captive. So no one is picking on you. But what I'm saying is, don't you want to get out? Don't you want to be set free? Wake up and get out. Wake up and get out. Zion, arise. Zion, break forth. God is calling you this day. Don't take your ease. Job said when he took his ease, that's when the thing he feared most came upon him. So right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, you can do this. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of going through? Aren't you tired of being by yourself and alone? Aren't you tired? We coming against that suicidal spirit right now in the name of Jesus. We come against you suicide in Jesus' name. That vessel belongs to Jesus. You cannot have him. You cannot have her. Your life is worth more than this. Shake off sin. Come from among the unclean thing. Find yourself at the altar of God and be thou redeemed and delivered. We speak peace to your mind today. We speak courage to your mind today. We speak that you have hope in Jesus Christ today. You're not by yourself. You have a God. You have an elder brother, Jesus Christ. The angels are warring on your behalf. Pastors are warring on, on your behalf. The apostles are warring on your behalf. Now war for yourself. Love yourself enough to fight. Fight! Fight! Get up and fight! Yes. It's up to you. Are you going to be held captive and stay there? Or are you going to walk out of that prison? I choose to walk out. Can you walk out with me today? Come on. Be strong. And walk into your new life. Into your new birth. 
in Jesus Christ. We bless you all today. We thank you for tuning in with us to now N-O-W-E, Network of Warring Elders, where our overseer is Apostle Ronald Washington, and our founder, MWM Ministries, is Prophetess Dr. M.P. Washington. And you may purchase strength, just a daily devotional, just a daily morsel of bread from Barnes & Noble, Books of Milton, anywhere books are sold. You be blessed, and you come out. Just another day I got to get up and fight Got to face my fears with 